Now we're going to apply this concept of principal values to the inverse trig functions. Um, it's important for you to know um, when we had a square root function, there were two answers. When we had a fourth root function, there were four answers. When you have an inverse trig function, there are actually infinitely many values for each input. Um, specifically, you will always have two of them that fall within the first sort of drawing of the unit circle, and all the others will just be multiples of 2 pi. So I'm going to sort of show you one only really quickly that I, that I think we'll be able to understand pretty easily. So let's say we look at the inverse sine of 1 half. So we, we think for a moment about what that means. That means we, we've got our unit circle. In fact, pause the video. You guys should be able to tell me what that is. The inverse sine of 1 half, that means the y value is a half. So you're looking for sort of a short y value. That's going to happen here at pi over 6. And it's also going to happen over here at 5 pi over 6. So in some sense, we know that inverse sine has, has two answers. It has pi over 6, and it has 5 pi over 6. And in the next slide, I'm going to get into, like, okay, so so what's the principal value? Like, which one of these is, is the real answer? But before I get there, I need you to notice there's actually more than two. There are actually infinitely many. Because when I go to pi over 6 here, I could also go all the way around the circle and add 2 pi to that. I could also go all the way around the circle twice, so in other words, add 4 pi to that. I could go around 3 times, I could go around 4, I could, I could go around lots of times. So a lot of times we'll write this like this. We'll say pi over 6 plus 2 pi k, indicating, hey, I'm here I am sitting at this pi over 6 answer, and I'm now looking at any other version of pi over 6. We can do the same thing for 5 pi over 6. We would say that it's 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi k. So the implication here is simply, when you take inverse sine in the problem, you are sort of allowing infinitely many answers into the problem, which is fine and not a big deal, you just need to know about it, right? So these effectively are all of the answers of the inverse sine of one half. What we now need to talk about is, okay, so among those infinitely many choices, how do we pick which one is the principal value? With the inverse trig functions, the idea is that the principal values are defined by the quadrants. Um, and the good news is, of the six inverse trig functions, um, three of them follow one pattern and three of them follow the other pattern. Um, so arc sine, arc cosecant, and arc tangent all have their principal values in the first and fourth quadrants. And that basically means that all of the answers that you're going to get out of these functions are going to be between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Um, by the way, one one sort of thing that I use to, to remember all of this is that I, I really feel like all three of these inverse trig functions are sort of heavily based on sine. So in my mind, I sort of have memorized that, that the quote-unquote sine-based trig functions all have their principal values in the first and fourth quadrants. The reason I consider these to be sine-based is, okay, well, this one actually just says sine, um, so that's not surprising. Cosecant is 1 over sine, and arctangent is sine over cosine. So I know that last one has a cosine in it, but the sine, like the thing on top, is sine, and that's the thing that's sort of important. So, again, to me, the sine-based ones are in the first and fourth quadrants. And, and so what that means, sort of on a, on a practical level, is if someone were to ask you, what is the inverse sine of negative square root of 2 over 2? Well, we can look at this as we should look at all of these things. So if we, you know, we go to the unit circle... We start thinking, okay, where will I find a, a, a negative y value, a y value of negative square root of 2 over 2? So you're sort of thinking like, well, that, that would happen here. And I mean, I suppose technically it would also happen over here, right? But we know that our principal values are in the first and fourth quadrants, so I'm only looking at these angular values over here. So notice th there were two answers. In fact, there were infinitely many answers, but there, you know, there were sort of two main answers, and, and the principal values have chosen for us the one that's in the first and fourth quadrants. So the answer we're going to be looking for is this guy down here, and we're actually going to give that, because it has to be between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2, we're going to give that answer as negative pi over 4. That is the principal value of the arc sine of negative square root of 2 over 2. Now, again... 
there is this other answer. There are infinitely many answers because I can look at multiples of both of them. But for now, I'm just focusing on the principal values. So here are three examples for you guys. Um, I would definitely recommend you guys try these on your own um, and then check answers with me. Um, so, you know, pause the video, um, look, work these three things out, you know, if necessary, check them with, with the video as you go along. Um, but I'd like you to try them on your own. It's important for you guys to practice with this. So the first one, the inverse sine of the square root of 2 over 2. So again, I'm going to sort of look at my unit circle and think about this in terms of where can I find a y value of the square root of 2 over 2. Well, that's the, the sort of middle height, so that's going to be both here and here. So I've got these two different angular values. But the principal values for sine, sec, cosecant, tangent are in the first and fourth quadrants, which means we're looking at this answer, and that answer is pi over 4. So the principal value of the inverse sine of root 2 over 2 is pi over 4. Next up, the cosecant of negative 2. I'm going to move this graph over a little bit. You may find this one to be a little bit harder, right? With with the cosecant and the cotangent, or with, with the more complicated function, sometimes it helps to sort of write out what this means. This function effectively means that the cosecant of something is negative 2. But think about what that means. That means that 1 over the sine of something is negative 2, which means the sine of that something had to have been negative one half, right? So, the, in some this question, to be honest, is effectively the same thing as asking what is the inverse sine of negative one half. Sort of like you can take the reciprocal function by doing the reciprocal of the argument, right? So now that I've written it in that way. We can look at this and say, okay, where do I find a y value of negative a half? That's going to happen over here and over here. But again, I know that I'm looking for the first and fourth quadrant values. So I'm going to be looking for this value, which is negative pi over 6. So there's my principal value for that one. Finally, we get to the inverse tangent. And, and tangent is, is honestly probably the hardest one for you, well, tangent and cotangent are both kind of challenging. I would again recommend you think about what this means. This means the tangent of some unknown angle is the square root of 3. Okay? Now, when you see a square root of 3 in these things, it should be reminding you of the, like, square root of 3 over 2 things. What, what this means is it means that the sine of something over the cosine of something is going to give me the square root of 3. And realistically, when that's going to happen is when you have a square root of 3 over 2 on the top and a 1 half on the bottom, because it means that the, you know, the 2s will effectively eliminate one another. So when does it happen that we have a sine of root 3 and a cosine of, of 1 half? Right? When, when do we get those two values? Well, we can look at our unit circle, and we can say, well, okay, this would happen. So let's see, your sine needs to be that. So I'm looking for a large sine value and a small cosine value. That's going to happen up here. Now, interestingly, it would also happen if we had negative square root of 3 over 2 and negative 1 half. So it could also have happened down here. That's sort of the other place it could happen. But, once again, principal values of, of tangent, I'm looking only at the first and fourth quadrants, which means I know that I'm looking for this angular value, which is um, pi over 3. And so that's the principal value for that one. So in, in summary, the principal values of arc sine, arc cosecant, and arc tangent will always be found in the first and fourth quadrants, and they will always be between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. In a similar fashion, the other three inverse trig functions, arc cosine, arc secant, and arc cotangent, all have their principal values in the first and second quadrants. Um, note that in this case, all three of these inverse trig functions, in my opinion, are all based around the concept of cosine, you know, the first one is actually cosine, the next one is secant, which is 1 over cosine, and the last one is cotangent, which we should remember as being cosine over sine. And and so again, in that case, we've sort of seen cosine as being the primary, the top function. So when you have a cosine-based inverse trig function, your principal value is going to be in the first or the second quadrant. So taking a look at one example of these before I give you some to try on your own, Suppose I were to ask you to evaluate the inverse cosine 
of negative square root of 3 over 2. Okay. Well, if we wanted the inverse cosine of negative square root of 3 over 2, that means we are looking for an angle whose x value is negative square root of 3. So that's a large x value. That's going to sort of happen back here and back here. So the angles we're looking at are that one and that one. Okay. So you probably recognize those as, hopefully recognize those as 5 pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6. But our principal values for the cosine base functions are in the first and second quadrants. So I'm only looking at these values. And that means the principal value of this guy is going to be 5 pi over 6. And that's your, your primary, your principal value answer for this inverse trig function. Here are three examples for you to work out on your own, on your own just like the other one. Um, so, you know, pause the video, work through these three, try them out, make sure you get them right. So the first one, the inverse cosine of a half, means I'm looking for an angle whose x coordinate, x component, is positive one half. So, you know, a sideways value like that. I'm looking at this angle up here or this angle down here. These are sort of the two places where that's going to happen. But my principal values for cosine happen in the first and second quadrants. It's across the top. And so that angle that we find up there is pi over 3. Next up, we have the inverse secant of negative 2 over the square root of 3. Um, and if you haven't done this one on your own yet, think about the way that we did inverse cosecant on the previous one. See if you can remember how to do that and, and definitely get a chance to try this on your own. To me, this means that the secant of some unknown angle is negative 2 over root 3. That means 1 over the cosine of that angle is negative 2 over root 3. And so if I reciprocal both of those, that effectively means that the cosine of some angle is negative square root of 3 over 2. Right, so I'm just looking for where the x value is negative square root of 3 over 2. So a negative square root of 3 over 2 x value is going to happen back here. It actually occurs to me, I think that's the problem we did on the last slide, but that's okay. So these are the two angles we're looking at, but cosine-based inverse trig functions have principal values in the first and second quadrants. So the angle I'm looking for this on this one is this angle here, which is 5 pi over 6. Okay. For the last problem, the inverse cotangent of 0. Right. This means that the cotangent of some unknown angle is 0. That means, whoops, not sine. That means the cosine of that angle over the sine of that angle is 0. Well, that's only going to happen when the numerator is 0. So I need to think of where I can find an x value of 0. Well, on my unit circle, I will find a 0x value up here and down here. But my principal values happen in the first and second quadrants, so the angle I'm looking for is pi over 2. And that, in some sense, that's all there is to, to, to finding the principal value of these functions. This definitely takes a lot of practice, so you can expect that when we're in class, we're going we're gonna to try a lot of these. Um, but, but these are the principles behind it. There is another video in the sequence where we're going to talk about, you know, so, so we do sometimes use the other values, and how do we find those other values from these principal values? So I'll, I'll see you there.